Okay, same thing in this problem. We're going to find the two equations that represent the arms of the absolute value function. But before we go into splitting apart the absolute value bars, we've got to deal with this 3. The first thing you want to do when trying to write these equations is you have to get everything else that's over here with the absolute value bar stuff on the other side. So how am I going to get this plus 3 away from the absolute value bar stuff? Subtract 3 from both sides. Oops, that's a 2. So now we have y minus 3 equals the absolute value of 3 halves x plus 6. Now just like the other problem, that means that y minus 3 equals exactly what's in here, 3 halves x plus 6, or y minus 3 equals the opposite of what's in here. And again, I'm going to put the opposite sign outside the parentheses so that I remember when I distribute it, I distribute it to both terms. Common algebra mistake number one, students distribute it to the 3 halves x and not to the 6. So continuing with this side, I get y minus 3 equals the opposite of 3 halves x minus 6. Minus, minus. Now, how am I going to get y by itself to get this in slope-intercept form? Add 3. And that's the idea that whatever we undid here at the beginning, we have to do it back to finish the problem, and we get y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3, and that's the equation of one of the arms. Over here, what do I need to do to get this in slope-intercept form? Add 3 to both sides, and y equals 3 halves x plus 9. And there you have the two equations that represent the arms of the absolute value bar, absolute value function.